2022. We do have a quorum. The first item would be to approve the minutes from July 11th. I entertain the motion to do so. So moved. Second. Motion by Mayeski and a second by Bradford. Any questions on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion carries. Next item is the city council report. And all I have to report is uh, at the July 12th city council meeting, 014 of 2022 was approved. And at the July 26th council meeting, R146 of 2022, 147 of 2022, and 148 of 2022 were all passed. And did I just hear somebody say that they can't hear me? Can you hear me, Tom? I heard something going on there. It makes two of us. I can't hear anything either. He's, is he up to his microphone? Right again. Okay. Can you hear me? That was weird because I heard Tom Robinson very faintly. Yeah. Hmm. Can you guys, Can you guys hear Phil? No. You can't hear me. No, can't hear him. Well, we got all talk for your night. Single file. We just won't talk. Right. All right. All right. Well, the well, Phil's report consisted, consisted of the items, of the that, were items that were approved at the last meeting. council meeting. So what I'll try, so what I'll try to do is to figure it out. Figure it out. It's just kind of repeat what everybody's saying. Uh, next, uh, next item is the staff report, report and your packet. You'll, you'll see uh, various, uh, various developments, developments we're working on and where we're at as far as the landscaping. And I think we did a report all last time that they are working on the landscaping at Walmart as well as some of these others. Does anybody have any specific questions? Oh, but we just got rid of the reason. Yeah, they're struggling with the irrigation. Um, somebody cut the irrigation line, so they can't plant the plants until they get the irrigation fixed. So Did you guys catch that on the Walmart? They can't plant until the irrigation gets fixed. Somebody damaged it during construction. They are working toward that end. Any questions on the status report? Hearing none, next item is the um, plan development for general development plan for lot six within the 51 West development. Uh, we did have it noticed for a public hearing. I don't believe anybody was signed up to speak, were they? What's this one? Oh. No, we didn't have anybody. Okay, signed up. nobody was signed up to speak, but we'll still close the regular meeting and reopen for the public hearing. Anybody here wish to speak, speak on the 51 West uh, Lot 6? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing, reopen for our regular business here. And the 51 West development is uh, basically what uh, what's being proposed here is to change. Um, lot 6, which is currently set up as uh, four four-unit buildings for a total of 16. And what we're being requested is to consider changing that to five duplexes, so there'd be a total of 20 units. And I think the reason it's here tonight is um, we'd have to change the zoning, and if they're going to move forward with that, um, they're out there doing some pipe work and they would need to upsize my understanding is a sewer line um, in order to accommodate the additional capacity is what I was told. Um, anything you want to add, Michael? Yeah, I don't I think that pretty much summarizes it. They're just in increasing the density and switching to duplexes instead of the four units. And I could tell you that as part of the approval um, they would still be, be within the park dedication requirements, so we're not looking, at least from this particular addition, to any more park area. 
but they would have to pay the additional impact fees because those are charged per unit and they're increasing it by four units. So that would be kind of a separate issue, but it is related to this item. Um, there is a resolution in the packet and then uh, <coughs> I think there's a map here. So yeah, here's the map <coughs> and you can kind of see that lost it on the map it's this um, area in the orange if I can find it again no. so we're looking on the west side here oh well, it's not orange anymore on this map um, it's this area down here it's just solid orange now. Before it was split up as four four plexes. Now it's just one solid lot. Are there in, any initial questions? Uh, go ahead. I just had one question on page 19. It mentions a conceptual signage plan that provided in the appendices. I didn't see that. Am I missing it, or is it just not there? Yes. A signage? Is yeah, on page nine, on page oh. nineteen at the bottom, uh, number eight, it says conceptual signage plan. It says our conceptual signage plan is provided on the site plan and the appendices, but I didn't see anything. I saw site plans, but I, didn't, I don't see any reference to it. signage. All right. A couple times, but Is the yeah. developer here to, to answer the question? You can just come up to the podium and just, if you could just introduce yourself okay. for the record. Uh, my name is Bruce Holler. I'm with the D'Onofrio Kotkin Associates, uh, kind of pinch hitting on Ron Kloss's behalf. Um, I think, I don't know if that there's an actual sign, a monument sign or any sort of signage packet, but I believe it may refer to just um, some placeholders for where the signage is on. Um, on the two streets that that we have en entrances off of. Is there a little rectangle shown or something on the plan, on the site plan? But, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see anything. I looked and I zoomed in and I didn't see, I didn't even see a leader going, you know, okay. here or something. I, but, I, you know, I could have missed it. But because he called it out, I was like, oh, let's see what kind of sign they're going to put out. <laughs> and then I couldn't find anything. So I was like, okay, maybe they're not going to put a sign out. Maybe. Yeah, typically I don't think we'd have a sign on the, on the actual development, would we? But I there was probably isn't going to be a lot of signage out there for, you know, duplex. You know, there's probably no, isn't going to be a lot of signage. There might be. going to be any signage? No monument sign. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I can't say I've seen any myself. Okay. Mm. One, um, one of the drawings in there, they've got like one, they've got like two tiny rectangles that just flank the which, driveway. Which page is that? Um, this is in, uh, this is on 11 of the whole packet, so not within the, uh -huh. the developer is, so I'm talking about the PDF, page 11. Page 11 of 25? No, it must be a different page. Um, scroll way up to the, or way up to the top, so it's the... Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. I see. They, they renumber, okay. Uh, yeah, it's on all three of those. Yeah, there it is. So that very first detail they've got with the five buildings on the lot, uh, they have it designated as entrance sign. Okay, I'm still not seeing it, but there's nothing there to really look at. No, I mean, they just have it as a plain rectangle. It's just a, okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tricky it's because, oh, okay. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I did miss that. There. Okay, okay. <clears throat> All right, thank you. There, yeah, okay, now I see it. So there is going to be some sort of entrance sign, two of them actually. Mm -hmm. Michael, there's more than some lines in there about any signage for 
Sure, sure. No, there's no regulations for signage. All right, any additional questions? Would we see about that signage? Sure, yeah, there'd be more details there. Sure. I'm definitely pleased that uh, that you reopened the second ingress, ingress, egress yes. into the development. Thank you. Any questions from anyone on the Zoom? Uh, David, I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm not picking up on you. Can you hear us? I'm going to move so I can get something else hooked up here. So bear with us, guys. It's on the move. I'm on the move. hear us now I can hear you can you hear yes. me yes can you hear us yes. uh, we uh, can. All, right. all right it's progress, it's progress here. Here. All right. All right. can you still hear us I can hear you yes okay all right we'll go yes. with can this. you hear us uh, we can hear you I, so I can okay. hear you I can also hear uh, David okay Pretty soon you might even be able to see somebody if we keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> there, now can you see them? There we go. I can, I can see them, yeah. All right, we're on the backup device here. So did you have any questions about anything? Sorry that if we missed anything. I I don't. I, I'm uh, uh, assuming the fire departments have got the new layout and has approved that. Uh, for getting their fire traps in and out and around the buildings. Yes, I believe Michael, you talked to the fire department, right? Yeah, that's that's why they added the the extra access point. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Anything else? <clears throat> Nobody else? All right. So at this point, um, if we don't have any questions, is anybody uh, willing to make the motion? We're looking for a recommendation to the city council for the, uh, it's an ordinance, so we we'll get two readings there for the zoning change on lot six. I'll make the motion to approve or uh, recommend that to council. So there's a motion by Schumacher. Is there a second? I'll second. Who had the second? Yeah. Second was by Caravello. <clears throat> um, any conversation on that? I'll just put this up for you that are zooming in in case you can't see it. Any questions excuse or me. comments? Excuse, excuse me, can I chime in just for a second? Uh, please through do. Our, yeah, through our, so I'm, I'm Fred Van Buren. I'm with uh, David and the development team. Um, I just wanted to clarify, because there's, you know, with technology and stuff, uh, that that was, uh, the density was being raised to 20 units. I just want to clarify that. Yes. Uh, yeah, we did catch that earlier. Thank you. This is the microphone. Anything else you want to add?
No, I think that's it, you know, from our side. All right, sounds good. Um, no further discussion. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. bearing with the technology. No problem, so. Thank you. All right. Um, next item is number six, new signage within the downtown design overlay district at 135 West Main Street. Uh, Michael, can you kind of <coughs> walk us through this one? Yeah, it's just a, a simple request. There's a new owner. Um, he's going to put some wall signage in the front and back and a projecting sign in the front. Pretty simple request, but it's required to come here because of the downtown design overlay zoning district, any change in signage. So. And this is for the, uh, what was the Kiganza Plaza building, and now it's going to be Anderson building for Eldon Homes? Yeah, so mm -hmm. Anderson Plaza, or? Yeah. yeah. I think that's what it was. That's what the sign is. And Eldon Homes. Yep. All right, are there any initial questions on this one? Here and none, we'll go right back to the resolution here. So uh, there is a real resolution in the packet. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the, uh, the resolution. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All right, second by Bradford. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed, that motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item number seven is uh, amended site plan for 314 <coughs> West Main Street. This is uh, the former marathon site, and they're in the process of building some apartments there, and they're trying to work out a deal with the neighbor, who I believe may be here, um, on an easement agreement. Um, are you here to speak? Okay, you can come up to the microphone here if you want. We might as well hear from you before we get too deep into it. Thank you for being here. Yes. And sorry you had difficulty over the weekend. Mm. Go ahead. I'm Dennis Huvila. I'm Amy Hartzell. We live at 311 West Washington. We have the easement that runs through 314 West Main. Our, our reason for coming today to oppose this is because um, in the past week there has been, they've shown a willful disregard for the existing easement, pouring a curb where our driveway is, virtually eliminating our easement prior to getting the agreement done, prior to getting any approval on the project so in that due to this we've lost confidence in their ability to act in good faith on any part of this easement well, that's kind of bold. all right okay anything else you want to add Not at the moment, Not at this, no. all right. thank you for being here so um, we'll enter that into the record and then They'll have their deliberation. They'll figure out what, if anything, they want to do tonight. All right. Hopefully, your conversations will continue. Um, but we'll see what we can do to help facilitate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. So, as you heard, there is a is an easement there currently. And what the plan was is they were attempting to move the easement. You might recall the easement is between the auto service center and the apartments that are there on West Main Street. And then I believe the new easement, if they were able to work out an agreement, would be coming in on Prairie Street is my understanding. Is that right, Michael? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So at this point, you know, in a perfect <coughs> world, that agreement would already be done and then they would be coming here you know, to have it approved, but that's not what happened here. So I guess it's up to the commissioners what, if anything, you want to do tonight, but I'll let you guys talk about it. Who wants to be first? 
just had one question for the homeowners. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, when I read the, you know, what was sent to us, it, it made it sound like they had worked with you guys. No? Okay. They, we had a verbal discussion. And we, we have been working through a, lawyer, through a lawyer, have the new easement written yeah. up, and we have a plan, but they have they haven't kept up on their side with the lawyer to get all the information in so that it can actually be signed and recorded into uh, the mapping and everything else. It, okay. They, I guess my, my question, I guess, was this a situation where you guys were on board the train and then they sort of disregarded your yes. property? Yes. Or were you never on the train to begin? We were on the train. We were on the yes. train. You were on the we train, were, and then they we were, they cut off your driveway. And yes. Correct. <coughs> and there was no communication of the cutoff on the driveway. Literally, if I had not left when I had left, I wouldn't be getting my car out of the driveway. Wow. So, because there was no communication. Oh, it landlocked you completely. Correct. We are now parking on the street because we can't get to our driveway. Period. And it, I even brought um, the agreement that Steve Brzezinski, our lawyer, put together. And he hadn't heard anything until Friday when I called him. Actually, after I called him, then he heard from the developer. But he hadn't heard anything from before then. So. I mean, I can see where it would benefit the city, one less curb cut on a busy street. But, but he, had a, yes. he had a plan to do it in from order. From your perspective, it could benefit, but really you could you, probably been living with it for a while and it doesn't really matter to you that much I guess if they move the easement well it would have been fine we just we in the agreement that we had that Steve Brzezinski wrote up there would have been a new easement that we could use off of Prairie sure. before the old easement was cut exactly. off so we would always have access to our driveway or even if in an imperfect world there'd be like a week or two lag I mean okay. it happens wow. but we had an agreement written up that we I didn't get a chance to sign <clears throat> And Steve had no information to put it to complete it. Okay. So, gotcha. right. so right now we have zero way, and so it's in violation of our easement. If that makes. Oh, absolutely, sure. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I guess my question would be: Is are, are you willing to continue the conversation, or are you guys done with it? As far as ultimately. I believe we're willing to continue the conversation, but we need to see actual actual action on the legal side. Get it recorded, signed, recorded by both sides, so that we have our protection. Okay. Prior and to further work on this. Sure. And are you able to use it now? I mean, no, you have a we curb have no. There. No. You'd have to jump the curb to get Correct. Well, right now we have curb a huge hole, hole on the curb. sidewalk. And I do have a picture. I see there's a sock over it, and there's kind of an area between the curb and the sidewalk that needs to be filled in. Yes. And if I could, I'd get it on the screen, or I can just show you guys. Yes, I probably wouldn't make it over that with my truck. So, no, I'm there so, so, so what we can maybe do is talk to the contractor and at least try to make it drivable until we get where are you parking now on Prairie Street and walking? Washington. 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 Mm -hmm. Where everybody else is parking because <laughs> people on Prairie Street. Street. And, have to and I literally and people yeah, are using hard. Washington as. Well. I literally took the picture on my way here. I was at the stoplight support oh. off, and I looked over, and I'm like, "There it is!" So I snapped the picture. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the people that are online can at least see it, um, but just looking at it, yeah, it doesn't look too. There's stakes in the ground and everything else you'd have to. Run and there's, over. it's blocked mm -hmm. off on where the new easement is, so we have zero <coughs> to get in. Priority. And you have no legal agreement in place no. right now to get Correct. that. The only new legal easement. agreement we have in place is that right now it's illegal what has happened. Right. Because that makes sense. Off. The, they the existing off easement. Old easement. <coughs> right. Right. Without permission. Violated. Correct. But okay. we don't we have we don't have a legal we don't have a legal agreement for the new construction. New easement. All right. Anybody online have any thoughts or questions? All right. Um, I, I have 
more. I'm just wondering if this, the, the illustration that I'm looking at, which is the, you know, the basically the drawing of the proposed new easement that kind of vacates the old one, I'm wondering, and I'm imagining you guys have, you know, are familiar with the thing that I'm looking at, hopefully, if that is satisfactory, that, yes, if that is satisfactory to you as far as backing out of the garage, getting access to the garage, if this was to be put into effect or to be agreed upon as the new easement, if this is okay or if Yes, they did work well with us on on creating that. Okay. And they actually put into effect my suggestion of the way it should be shaped so that we could right. access it properly. Okay. Yes. So you gave them input into this one, so this is yes. this will work for you. Mm -hmm. And then my only other I'm just I was kind of shocked when I went over to look at this on Saturday morning that this had situation had taken place. And do we have any mechanism to do something to the developer and say, um, not okay, here's your penalty for doing this because you broke the law and you yeah. gave these people a garage yeah. uh, in an island that was not accessible, which is just, that's not, that's not okay. This is not how it should be done. I think I think it would be nice to do something in that regard if we can. We've been dealing with several nonconformities on site, erosion control, and we've issued a couple stop work orders. And um, this is just another incident incident where he's done this before he even got approval site plan approval again. So so yeah, we've got to continue to work with this guy to to get him on the right path. I almost have a, I was of a mind because there were concrete guys over there and I was like, boy, well, what happens if somebody comes to, I mean, if you folks show up here tonight and say, yeah, we don't have any access to our easement, if we could issue an order that said, yeah, now you're going to have to get the concrete guys, only now they've got to have jackhammers because they've got to put the driveway back into the access mm -hmm. of the existing easement until everything is worked out and T's are crossed and I's are dotted, like, can we, can we even make that happen? I mean, that might be extreme, but I'm just kind of like, it's uh, just totally silly. And this, this, this builder developer should know better, I think. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we've got to have some internal discussions about, you know, because the agreement is technically between two property owners, but he is ultimately changing the way traffic flows through the site. Yeah. Um, so it's, there's by, a couple things going on there. Yeah, and by changing, I mean, taking out that piece of city, that driveway apron piece that goes over the sidewalk on Main Street, I'm like, well, that leads to the easement, but is that municipal, I mean, that's city of Stoughton property oh, yeah. that they altered yeah. there without legally being able to do so or having permission to do so. So I'm just kind of like, man, that was really, that's pushing it. That's beyond pushing it. <laughs> do I un oh, go ahead. Do I understand that they gave you no notice that this was happening? That they just came and poured that curb and cut you Correct. off? Correct. So <laughs> you didn't, they didn't morning. know if your was car say, was locked in there or anything? No, actually, and my experience was is that the developer ushered me out that like ushered me out of the driveway because I, I think I surprised them. I have an interesting schedule being a church musician, and so I was leaving a little bit later in the day than six in the morning. So, mm -hmm. on my way out, I noticed they were having a conversation right at our easement, and I assumed it was about the sidewalk, not our easement, but about maybe filling yeah. on the sidewalk. And they were all like, "You got to go, you got to go." And so I thought, okay. And then my husband came back that evening to the hole. So I heard, and I had no, I wasn't told on my way out. I was nothing, no communication whatsoever. And if I hadn't left, if I had decided to work from home that day, then what? Let me understand this. The developer was there Correct. with someone else Correct. talking about the work, supposedly, they were talking about that was going to be work. done. Mm -hmm. Probably. And never even said to you, hey, wait a minute. Nope. No, he said the opposite. Please, like, go, 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 I guess, something like that. And no accommodation was made from the other direction for you to get into the driveway? No. 
it's still cordoned off. I just, I, I'm really having a problem <laughs> with this, and I'm not sure what we can do about it, but I just th think that's so blatant, the fact that he was even there when, I mean, even if you don't think about it ahead of time, the, the fact that she was pulling out and he had to know he was closing that off, that's yeah. just blatant disregard for uh, yeah. this property owner. Yeah, the curb or the, or the sidewalk, n neither one of them should have been done without you know, having the agreement and at least having communication with with the people that well, that can use the yeah. easement. I, I don't know what we can do, but I'm not of a mind to give this developer anything until he works with these people and gets something figured out. So I, I think your options are you could approve the resolution or you could postpone it until that agreement's been worked out and then in the meantime we can see what we can do from the city's end to try to help facilitate at least getting your driveway usable yeah. I think that's kind of where we're at and it's up to you what you want to do um, I prefer to postpone it just because it's kind of a, you didn't follow the right procedure protocol schedule nothing I mean none of this made any sense and I mean even though it would be an even slower process you know you'd have an opportunity in a small claims court because this violates your easement agreement okay but I mean that would be that would just take a really long time this could probably be remedied faster than that but mm -hmm. I mean it, it is a violation of your property so okay I mean, I suppose you could approve it with a contingency, but you know, I don't know if you want to do that. That would be the third option, you know, that the approval would be contingent, but I don't know if that really forces the issue. Is there any way we can force the issue? I'm not inclined to approve it, and it's probably outside our swim lane, but I would send public works out there tomorrow morning, demolish whatever structures they put in place that impedes their access to their property and then send them a bill for that work. Yeah. That, that's probably outside my swim lane. We could do it. No, it might not be mine either, but we'll have a conversation. <laughs> that's, that's what I would have done when I was our, a public works director anyway. Our city attorney I has, had the crew out there tomorrow and Welcome back, bill. Rodney. City attorney is trying to get back. His flight's been <laughs> delayed, so I couldn't really even have that conversation. Um, so I guess at this point, does somebody want to make a motion for something? I'll make a motion. Postpone the decision on this, or this um, resolution. All right, until until the agreement's been so, reached. Yeah. Okay. I mean, at least, and, and with the time frame of the, the next available plan commission meeting, that it can come back. Okay. And who had the second? I'll second. Second by Caravello. Any more discussion on this? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? All right, that motion carries. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Sure. And I would like to say thank you very much for coming in person that and for calling me back. Uh, everyone, thank you. That meant a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, next item is site plan for 324 South Water Street. Uh, 324 South Water Street is uh, the uh, Water Street Tavern, formerly the Naughty Norski. And it looks like what they're trying to do is um, do some storage outside, including a cooler to create opportunity for you know more storage, basically. Um, it looks like there's a shed, storage, fencing, um, is there somebody here from there? No. Uh, anything you want to add, Michael? Um, yeah, thank you. I, I, they're going to expand it a little bit, so the brick brick paver, expand the area. Um, that'll be fenced um, and really just clean up the site. They need a walk-in cooler because they're just cramped for space. And, uh, yeah, their future addition is what they're talking. So... Yeah, that's about it. Michael, will this be attached onto there 
structure, the current structure? I don't think so. Okay, so completely detached. Right. In the future, yeah, they're looking at adding on to the building. In that same spot or a different spot? In that spot, yeah. Yeah, they're pouring a slab, I think, to essentially accommodate a future addition there. Got it. And are there any uh, initial questions on this one? Anybody online have anything? No. One additional comment, Mayor, if I could. Sure. The, um, I would recommend that uh, if they're going to have the, depending on what the temperature of their cooler freezer area is, that if they're going to have a, a permanent freezing temperature on that concrete slab, they might want to consider digging down a little further and sandbed that a little bit. That'll help them a lot on their uh, condensation and mold issue that they may have. So uh, a little bit of extra work up front will save them a lot down the road. I mean, the weird part is when you put that on the slab and that cold temperature permeates through it long enough, sure, yeah. then it never thaws underneath there ever. So right. then, then you get, and being right next to the river too, so it's going to have a little bit more moist soil in there. So I think they're going to be a lot more prone to, uh, to black mold, which I'm sure the health department's not going to want. So, Yeah, a, a little bit of extra work up front, um, I think will save them a lot in the long run. All right, anybody online have any questions or comments? No. All right, otherwise, uh, I guess I would entertain a motion for this one. There's a resolution in the packet. I'll make that motion. I'll motion. second. Motion by Robinson, second by Bradford. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed. That motion carries. <coughs> um, next item is certified survey map for 1000 uh, East Street. And my understanding from talking to Michael earlier, this is a business out in the, in the, uh, the park south over by Stoughton Trailers and they're looking at possibly uh, combining some parcels which I think has some advantages and then maybe doing some work on there. <coughs> Anything you want to highlight Michael? Yeah the current lot line goes right down the middle of the build, existing building and they want to put a, an addition on in the future. So in order to put an addition on, they need they need to eliminate that lot line. So under normal circumstances, we wouldn't let let them build a building over a lot line. But this is a historical thing. <laughs> so so it'll be good to correct this. All right, and this developer here or online? I'm I'm the uh, I'm the building owner. Can you guys hear me? We can. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty straightforward. It's a non-conforming use right now, and we'd like to uh, remove the non-conforming nature of it. All right. So you're looking to expand your current business or change use? Yeah. Yes. It's, um, it's currently uh, rented out to... Um, it, it, yes, it's rented out and they're looking at getting some more office space. So we want to look at putting an addition on uh, and maybe improving the uh, external appearance of the building a little bit. All right. Any questions or comments from commissioners? I was confused at first when, when I was reading it uh, with that lot line down the center of the building. And it's got to be a that'll be a historic thing so makes sense now anybody online have any questions or comments no 
All right, so we have a resolution for this one in the packet. Uh, entertain a motion. I'll make the motion for it. Motion by Schumacher. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Caravello. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Oppose that motion carries. Uh, next one is for 1424 U.S. Highway 51. This is the former uh, Pizza Hut building. It looks like they uh, want to do something different on that site. Michael, you want to give an overview, or are you somebody here with Pizza Hut? Uh, you can come up to the microphone. You want to kind of walk us through this? Jeff Kramer with Kramer Development. Uh, my company is based out of Middleton. We do restaurant retail, some office space. I've uh, been doing this for about nine years with my own company and about almost 20, hard to believe, uh, commercial real estate since uh, getting out of college. Um, I met with Michael once. We've spoken uh, several times on the phone and via email. So I've gonna accept an offer to purchase the former Pizza Hut property and we'd like to redevelop it. We've looked at a couple things, um, the first being trying to use the existing building, which um, for what we do wasn't going to work. It's kind of oriented the wrong way, uh, some low ceiling heights and some other issues that precluded us from really taking that further. Um, so in your packet, I think, does everyone have the site plan we proposed? Um, and this is just a conceptual review. What I'd like to have happen is have an open dialogue about things you like, don't like, challenges you see, uh, what, what uh, what you think about the plan and that'll give us some direction if we want to move forward with this and take the next step and you know make a formal submittal and that kind of thing so I'll walk you through the site plan first um, the existing structure would be demolished the new proposed building is just under 6,000 square feet we anticipate that being probably three tenants um, we have a tenant for the east side where the pickup window is and we have uh, interested group for the full drive-through on the west side of the property. Uh, both of those would be restaurants. The center uh, would be some sort of you know, service-oriented business, that kind of thing. Um, the the uh, site plan hasn't gone any further than this. We're showing some area in the northwest corner for stormwater retention. Uh, we're showing what we think is probably appropriate parking on the east side of this property. Um, in the adjoining property, there's an easement that grants 15 parking stalls to this property. So we anticipate that being for employees and, and, and that, that kind of thing. Um, the pickup window is probably the most um, curious thing from, from my perspective. So a lot of the restaurants, regional and national, are going to this concept with a pickup window. And for obvious reasons, it's convenience. Um, people are now ordering more online and using an app. So a lot of these restaurants have an app on your phone. You click on it, you can order, tells you what time to pick it up. Uh, you pay right there. They'll send you notifications back and forth saying, you know, this is a special tonight, this is going on this week, that kind of thing. So it really drives revenue for them and it also helps them manage their operations. So they can stagger these things so people aren't putting in 30 or orders in 15 minutes and, you know, the kitchen can't keep up, that kind of thing. Um, so I put together some information about mobile order. Do you guys have this information too? Did you see that? That was online. Yeah, so I'll just hit on a couple key things. Um, so what they're trying to do, obviously, is reduce bottlenecks at the drive through and in the kitchen. drive throughs are a challenge to get approved, in, say, in Madison, for example. They don't like drive throughs even though it's a prevalent thing. So a lot of people are going to pick up windows rather than drive throughs to try to get that same type of service. And now when you're not required to, to order on the property, it allows businesses to, to have that function. Um, and, and the quick facts, you can read all that. Uh, it's an expanding type of uh, operation. So the company that we're working with provided me some statistics on their operation, which I'll just go through and this wasn't in your packet. So they're not allowed to pay essentially at the window. This all happens uh, on the mobile app and on the order, which reduces time. So their average transaction is 52 seconds once you pull in, uh, which keeps things moving very quickly, obviously. Their average uh, weekday transactions 
in that pickup window is 61 and the average weekend is 45. So when you look at that, say an average weekday, their busiest time is between five and seven at night. And that's 42% of their business, 42% of that, of that 61 uh, equates to about 12 orders per hour in their peak time. So if you're looking at say a minute per order, you got 12 minutes out of the 60 minutes of that pickup window being used. So it's fairly low. And if you compare that to like Starbucks, McDonald's, the ones that are really pushing people through on a traditional drive through they might see 150 to 200 cars per hour during their peak. So this is very different than that. Um, and I realize that a lot of uh, municipalities don't have an ordinance that speaks to this right now because it's kind of a new thing. We just finished a project in Wanakee and had a similar discussion with Plan Commission um, because their ordinance is much like yours that has traditional drive throughs and that's really about it. So we're trying to kind of navigate through that and having these types of businesses um, is obviously beneficial for the community. It's beneficial for the project. They tend to stay a long time. They'll sign a long-term lease. Um, and on the flip side, most of these companies won't look at smaller markets without a drive through or a pickup window. They feel that that is a function they really need to survive in a smaller community. So that's, that's really why we're here. I took a couple photos. Um, the former Old National Bank on Mineral Point Road is redeveloped recently and just opening. They have a company in there called Max. They have a pickup window. There's a two-car stack behind it that flows out into uh, two lanes, one that goes into the new bank drive through and then the bypass lane around that. Just down the block, Chipotle, they added a window for pickups, um, which is on the side of the building. And uh, uh, the project we did in Wanakee was the last photo in there uh, for Noodles and Company. And as you can see in, in those pictures, there's no way to order on the property. Every sign says, you know, mobile order only, pickup only, that kind of thing. <coughs> so when I look at our plan, and, and speaking with Michael, what we are having trouble achieving is the 100 car or the 100 foot stack behind that pickup window. So as you can see in the site plan, that is going to flow into our drive lane on the south side of the property. We're also showing on this plan four cars stacked at the window. And um, the tenant's requirement, the business's requirement, is typically two to three cars at the window. So we can meet all of their requirements. We can't meet the 100 foot stack behind the window on the plan as it's drawn today. Um, and, I, and I see in that ordinance that the plan commission has the ability to modify that through a conditional use. So that's, that's one of our primary concerns. Um, on the west side of the building, we did incorporate a bypass lane, um, and that would allow people that are parking in the back, primarily staff, to exit the property. Uh, during early morning hours when they're taking deliveries, uh, a you know, Cisco truck could pull around that way and uh, circulate the site without having, without having trouble. So that's kind of the overview of what we're trying to accomplish. And again, I'd like to just turn it over to you for feedback and thoughts on, on what you see. Hey, I have a question. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Okay, my, my question is on the uh, lower part of the plan, and I guess that's by the uh, south side, according to the plan north on the on the plan, uh, how do they get out after they pick up their order? What is the route that they for exiting that area? That's a good question. What I'd like what I'd like to have happen um, is people come out, turn right, and head right back out the site. They they would turn right as they come out. That would that's what I'd like to have happen rather than people circulating the whole property. Is there, uh, is there enough room to make that turn there? Yeah, we may have to pull that island back a little bit to the south so that turn can happen a little, a little quicker. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it, it just didn't look like there was enough turn, turn room there. Is it going to create a problem with the people going to the back end, uh, to the back lane then? That drive lane coming in is shown as 26 feet. Um, yes. So you can think, you know, two-way traffic coming through there. And, you know, you have a stop sign on that uh, 
east median there separating the traffic from the pickup window and I think that can function I you know I, and I'm just saying this it, it just doesn't look like there's enough room for the people on on the uh, south side to make like a u-turn is what I'm understanding and to go out and the people are using the back lane to get past me. It looks like there's going to be some interference there. And that's what it looks like on the, for, to me. And maybe, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it just looks like it's going to be very congested, tight turning there. Yeah, we can we can have the engineer take a look at that. I made a note of it. Okay. All right. Anything else? That's my, that's to my only concern. All right, I had Commissioner Bradford was next. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. So are both of these drive-throughs the pickup window model, or is one an actual drive-through and one's a pickup? Yeah, the um, drive-through on the west side of the property, that has an order board, as you can see, called out on the site plan, and then has traditional uh, drive-through window. Thank you. Yep. And we've got that, the 40 foot beyond the drive through and the 100 feet behind. We have that labeled on the plan as well. Yeah. That's what I, I, I To me, it seems more practical if the four cars in the lower are able to go all the way around the building and just make that one way going around the building. Yeah. Um, and then there's kind of a pinch point in that northern drive through if they get backed up will the car would the car be able to get between there to exit yeah you know i think we're you see where that storm that storm uh, catch basin is yeah you know that you could pull that retention area back so pull it back to the north and give some more room in there obviously if that catch basin had to be extended further into the retention area that's fine but i agree with you that's a change we would have to make to push cars through there without being backed up at that point i think it'd be kind of difficult to like like Tom mentioned to t for the lower cars to cut that corner to go out without almost having to do a Y turn and then if you have incoming cars I don't know why the incoming cars coming in would just be go to park in the back lot is that what you foresee or utilizing that drive through and that's yeah or utilizing yeah. the drive through um, but as you can appreciate we've had some issues with our current drive throughs yep much like the other municipalities yep. during COVID, and it seems like it's continued. So, I mean, the no order, you know, the app order seems like a good solution to that. Right. I would assume there's probably some customer training that needs to be involved with that, and until that occurs, I'm just wondering if people are just going to get in line and not even really realize it. I don't know what the experience has been. Yeah, you know, and other ones I have on their sign, it says no, you know, no order, mobile only, old, mobile order only kind of a thing. But I'm sure that happens once in a while. Someone pulls in and says, I'd like to order, and they say, you can't, you know. Mm -hmm. But point taken on the on the uh, <coughs> on the potential <coughs> potential U-turn conflict and the that stormwater area kind of pulling that back modifying that to make sure we can get cars through there without bottlenecking yeah so the the front of the building is is facing main street is that those are parking spots there too correct yeah the front of the building would face main there your storefront entrances would be off that front parking lot so the south side of the building would be the main entrance that back area i'm guessing we would modify a bit but that would be say single door entries into the back of those suites for employees and also taking you know trash and stuff out getting deliveries that kind of thing is there enough room to move parking down on the side of the building if you're not going to do the u-turn i'm just i know myself i've gotten stuck over in mcdonald's yeah um <laughs> if i had my car i couldn't pull my car out for like 15 minutes um because i was inside and everybody else was in the, the drive-through line yeah. around. and so i'm just looking at your area five that those you know just doesn't um so i just wonder if the five behind the building room, you're saying if there's a different yeah way to move the parking away from those lanes at all, all and move move maybe what you've got in seven and five probably couldn't get as many but move it down 
opposite that one window, the pickup window. Yeah, we, we might utilize, because the, the uh, off-site parking, we just figured that out as part of our survey and title work we did, that there's those 15 extra stalls. Even if we utilize seven or ten of those for employee parking, that would give us some additional space in the, in the rear. Yeah. Michael, do you know how much parking would be required by the ordinance? I didn't, I didn't dig into that. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, it's restaurant really uses, and then there's a, a separate use in the middle that we is kind of unknown yeah. uh, right now. But I looked at it using your ordinance, and the, I forget if it was number of patrons for capacity for restaurants or yeah. exactly how that worked. And we were pretty close yeah. with what we laid out. Right, yeah. Is that with the, just the 15 or with No, the that was just what we had on site. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, he's using the 100 feet, but we know the 100 feet isn't working. Um, so, I mean, if this drive through is busy like a lot of them are, that could literally be around the building um, to the other pickup, um, the way they've been operating. Just about even McDonald's was out into the 51 last weekend. So, yeah. We've got, we've got to dig into it farther for sure uh, with the with the attorneys and look into this, but I see more restrictions coming for drive-throughs down the road. And you said that Wanaki did they actually change their ordinance or make no. sure, would it be helpful if we, if we reached out to them to see? They haven't changed anything. Um, that drive-through was a conditional use, so it was just basically based on what we proposed and the type of use we had going on there. Yeah, we don't really encourage conditional uses. Um, I called Madison today because you know we do them, but you yeah, know we do them begrudgingly you know, yeah. because we don't have an ordinance in place that process yet. Obviously, that creates challenges. Stacking requirements um, after something's approved. If we want to modify it, and then even a future use. You, you know, you might be limited on what you can do here if one of these businesses. A lot of moving parts here. Or to move elsewhere. How would it impact your ability to bring in tenants <coughs> both of those for pickups rather than a drive through and a pickup? Uh, that's a good question. I think some of the folks that we're discussing this with would be okay with it. Others haven't adapted that mobile order as fast or as quickly, and so that might limit us with some of those type of tenants. But that's not a not a bad idea. I'm just thinking the impact might be a little bit less. You right. don't usually have, and as you explained yeah. very well, um, you know it's a little bit less of an impact, but definitely would afford three businesses to be on that site rather right. than one. Yeah, and, and our goal is to build it so it works and we operate the property and maintain ownership. We don't plan to come in, build it and flip it. So my goal is to make sure this thing works because if it doesn't, I'm the one getting the calls and having the issues with tenants and, and them not being able to run their business appropriately. So. And I think with the advent of, of uh, what we had with COVID, the idea of ordering ahead of time and then picking up has become a little more friendly. I right. mean, people are used to that even with our downtown businesses right. that they've been doing it. So right. Even local businesses have the couple stalls that, that says curbside take. only or something. Yeah. And it's also helping in today's environment with the lack of employees. You know, they can structure this a little bit better. So like this mobile or, mobile order app, it only allows uh, four orders every 15 minutes. And if you're out of that, it pushes your time frame out. So they can regulate. If they only have two people cooking, you know, they really need four. They can kind of maintain that operation without blowing the whole thing up, you know. Now, the first time I encountered that on the East Coast, I actually pulled through thinking it was a yeah. drive-through, and they said, "Oh no, ma'am!" And they said, "Just pull over and download the app." Right. <laughs> That's what I did. I pulled into a spot, I download, I order, and I waited, and then came back around. So I think people do get used to it, you right. know, once they've experienced it. Yeah. So you, you raise a good point, though. Whether you call it pickup window or a drive-through, doesn't matter within your ordinance, right? I still have the same regulation. Yeah, and I was trying to figure out if you could spin the building or something to increase vehicle the space stack space in vehicle space. But I don't know right if you now. can do that without losing a unit. Yeah. 
and everyone wants frontage on right. Main right. Street there. Yeah, it looks better. It, right. It, you know, so I get that too. So, what, what kind of timetable do you have here? I mean, you just said tonight we're just kind of taking our first peek at it conceptually. Yeah, uh, I've got about 30 days to make a decision if I want to move forward or not with the uh, with the project. So I'm not asking for you know an approval from you guys. Obviously, I'm just looking for some feedback if I want to pursue this, acquire the property, and then figure out all the details and work with you know the city. Um, that's fine. If you guys all say we hate this idea, I'll probably say okay, I'm probably not going to move forward with this. You know, but just looking to get some feedback from everyone. I certainly don't hate the idea, but when you come off of 51 in the yeah, like, there's only one curb cut, so that one entrance, uh, and using plan north, the, the one to south, okay, are, are you envisioning the car to come in and then hang a left to get to that first drive-through order line? Yeah. You yep. Cars would, so cars would generally come in how this works if they've so got... They would come in here and then immediately turn left and then try to get in that line. Yeah, if you order and your pickup time is 6.30, you're going to pull in there at 6.30 and there might be a car ahead of you. Sure. Oh. That's, that's the idea. If it's not, you could obviously, if it's shown like it is on the plan, you would circulate the building and come back around if you had to. So if there were four, four cars already in that queue, <clears throat> the fifth car that pulls in looking to get in that queue is stuck in this entranceway, correct? Or they go around the building and. Or they go around the building. And by the time your 50 seconds is up, you're People probably next lazy. To the line. They're probably just going to want to sit yeah. right there and hope that the car moves soon. Right. Uh, okay. The other thing I just, I just, I know I don't understand this concept, but the island that you have on the south, five foot wide island, um, I guess necessary or not from your perspective, but that, that does trap people in that all of a sudden realize that, whoops, I can't just place an order, and now they're stuck. Yep. Uh, and they can't, unless they jump that curve, uh, they have to wait until they get out of that line. Yeah, the theory, so, sorry. So anyway, that was just one thing I just saw is like, yeah. a the, box that could get trapped in there. The theory with that island was it separates those cars in the stack from the people driving on that lane. Sure. It also affords us the opportunity to put a sign at the end of that, on the south end of that, saying mobile order pickup, you know? Sure. So that, that's the idea. It could something functionally could possibly be obtained with striping too. Yeah. Uh, and that would still allow people to get out of that queue if they got right. realized, well, I don't have the app and yep. let's go somewhere else. Yeah, generally, like I said, we put a sign there and then we'd landscape that to give you some shielding from that window. Okay. If that's the idea, too. Okay. I was thinking along the lines of, like, uh, if you could, I know you just uh, gave the, the benefits of having that island um, on the end there, but if that island were eliminated and you shifted the whole project down, if your, your upper drive-through window could have one of those double setups, like, you know, your McDonald's and things like that are doing... Um, and then you don't have to worry as much about that 100-foot tail on there, to, and then you'd have your whole building moved down a little bit. Just a thought with that. Um, they like for, for turning radiuses, you know, think of like the worst possible scenario of like somebody's got an F-150 with an extended cab on it and, and a full bed. Right. Because we got plenty of those driving around here, so. Pulling a boat. I represent that. Yeah. Pulling a boat. Yeah, you're right. Just, just <coughs> like that. Um, otherwise, yeah, just to be conscious of the, the couple of pinch points that are in there, like Mayor was saying. Um, <coughs> but maybe again to play with the positioning of the building and, and um, maybe the, the, just the double board on the other end might shorten your lines up or um, another thing to would be if with your food tenants in there would they would they only accept truck delivery um, outside of business hours because uh, i could see you know they pull a semi in there then right they come in at noon yeah it doesn't work right 
Got it. The, the other thing I'm wondering is on the, the four laner, what if you came in the driveway, what if you went down toward the bottom and you came in from the opposite end so all the vehicles are leaving the same way? Puts you on the wrong side for the window. Is that your Yeah it does. What if, what about if you <clears throat> rather than having the traffic the four lane, the traffic like curving in right there so. on the south, have it come in and go all the way up through like your area five seven if you have a way for them to get around and then get in the line coming around the building. Get in, the, get in the line for the pickup window, you're saying? Yeah, in other words, okay. Yeah. If, if you came in here at the driveway, go right. all the way around, and then cool. enter the lane this way. So you have all the traffic kind of going and clearing that driveway. Right. Um, and I think it'd be easier some, for people to get in line that way than to make that little turn thing there. Yeah. If, if we... Um, pull that retention area back to the, no the northwest and create a better flow of that bypass lane. It's probably a, a more natural thing to do then than to make a hard left as you come in. If there's no one at the window or a car at the window, it's very easy to make that turn in and come in. I agree with you. I think if we came back with this plan, we would have that cleaned up. Now, so I'm we just better thinking even through. if you have, if for some reason something happens and you do have more cars than you would expect, yeah. It puts them out of the way of right. that driveway. Yep. Uh, you know, I think most of the turning radiuses that you show on this plan are too tight, except for the one on the west, uh, uh, northwest side is appropriate. Uh, but the rest of the turning radiuses just look way too tight. That one down by the stop sign, I don't know how they're going to come down and make that turn without interfering into the other lane. And uh, uh, the one up at the, the, the west end, coming out of that west end, into the, it, it just seems very tight to me as far as attorney weaknesses. Now, the, the northwest turning radius seems appropriate. So. Okay. The delivery truck thing is, a, is an issue. Hmm. So it seems like you've got sports. I mean, you're definitely intrigued by the idea, for yeah. sure. Okay. Um, but, you know, there's just a, a couple little things, at least from our experience here, that, we've, that we just notice and we, we want to avoid any of these. Right. I mean, we want you guys to be successful, too. Yep. And my, not talking about the site, all site, um, I live about three minutes from the site, and I welcome more food options in town. Yeah. <laughs> but that stretch of road, uh, and this is a city problem, I think, nobody goes 25. There's a ton of curb cuts. There's a ton of really quick turnover businesses there, so right. people aren't just going and staying for 30 minutes. And this is even a higher turnover than Pizza Hut probably ever was. So, so there's a lot more cars coming out of those curb cuts that are in some places are only like a foot apart. And it's it can just be really crazy uh, trying to get in and out of a lot of those businesses uh, at certain times of the day. Uh, and, and I see it every day because uh, I, I come out King Street every day. And, try to go left now to avoid the mess on hold. But uh, that is just a super busy little part of town. It'd be a lot better if people went 25. Maybe maybe the police and public works can look at some sort of traffic calming or something. But uh, it's it's a bit crazy. And, and it could just be I'm used to Stoughton already, too. <laughs> Coming from the East Coast. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying okay. right now. <laughs> Uh, but I'm used to this yeah. small town traffic, and it's kind of crazy. So anyway, that's my only other comment. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess if you guys have any more comments, maybe forward them to to myself, and then I'll pass them on to you or 
Um, if you if you wake up in the middle of the night tonight and say, I wish I would have said that. <laughs> if it does, uh, shoot us an email and we'll pass that feedback along. Otherwise, you plan on being back here in a month. Is that kind of your goal? I need to make a decision on moving forward. You've got 30 days to make a decision. Yeah. Left, essentially. So I, I don't know what kind of decision you can make that we can reinforce before we meet again, I guess is the point I'm trying to make. We don't. We only meet monthly, this yeah. body. Yeah, I'm not asking for anything else from, from this commission. Okay. What do you need? Well, I was just going to say, if we pursue this, and whether it's the pickup window idea on the west, and assuming we make the tur turning radiuses work, and, and that whole thing functions well, should we be st sticking to what you currently have as that ordinance? And it's not going to change in the next three, four months, I presume. Um, is there flexibility? It sounds like, Mr. Mayor, you don't like to use the conditional use process. We don't, but we have, and we would run this past our city attorney and see what his thoughts are, and certainly if he had any questions, he would reach out to you directly. Okay. Any other thoughts? Just that I think we'd be willing to work with you. Okay. You're willing to work with us. Sure. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm just... I'm floating like, well, could this be L-shaped? I mean, what else could you do? Yeah, we've probably <laughs> done all that. Already. We've got like A through J uh, options. <laughs> we ended up with this one, so. Yeah, we understand. We appreciate you taking the effort to do that. Yeah. So um, if we get any more feedback, we'll send it your way. Sounds great. All right. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, next idea item is uh, plan development. Uh, for lots one, three, and four of 51 West. And let's see what we got here. Michael, you want to run us through this one? Yeah, so there, this is another instance where they're, they're looking to increase densities. Um, so each, each lot, they're, they're adding one or two duplexes to increase the number of units. Uh, that's really essentially what they want to do. All duplexes. Uh, all right. Previously, they were looking at townhouses on on some of these, and uh, yeah, that's that's about it. So these are on the the western side and the western edge of Fifty One West. Yeah. Previously, there was lots one, two, and three, but. Uh, the final plat kind of shifted the numbers around a little bit, so now it's lots one, three, and four, just to make it a little confusing. All right, any initial thoughts or questions from commissioners on this one? So we increased the density on these, and we just have the other proposal on lot six. Is that going, does that... Um, impact the development as a whole as far as traffic, traffic volume, uh, ingress, egress, that kind of thing. I mean, it's not a, a huge so, Yeah, it's increase not a huge density, increase. I don't know how it's going to affect... I don't know if anybody's on anybody online. Okay. You, come on up. <coughs> Patience, right? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so Jeff Grenier, I'm an architect. I actually laid out lot six as well. So um, this is for another developer on lot one, three, and four. I think we're only adding five you well it'd be ten units, five duplexes to the whole. And then the other one was only adding two duplexes, which is four units. So we're technically only adding 14 units. So in a subdivision that big, I can't believe it would affect the traffic flow that much. So, and another thing is these units are ranch units. They're, uh, you know, I, I, we just, I just did 10 of them up for another developer up in Windsor. They're all, and I'm actually some in Oregon too, they're ranch units, two bedrooms with a lower level that they can finish and maybe have another bedroom with an egress window, but they're all accessible. It's, a, it's an elder, probably more designed for elderly people that are people that want to age in place or anything like that. So 
and we meet all the criteria. I mean, if we wouldn't have to do much except for the density, except we're asking for a rear setback going from 30 to 20 because we're finding out some of these people like to have a screen porch or a Four Seasons porch out the back. And the, 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 the base unit does not go into the setback in the rear at all, but if they want to add a porch or a sunroom, that would go into the rear setback. So that's why we're kind of asking for a little bit of leniency on the rear setback there. And I think originally the proposal before actually asked for it too, the one that was approved before. All right, any questions for our guest? Hey, Tim, if I could, this is Bob DeWork. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Um, I happen to be online here. Uh, presently, there is a 20 foot uh, rear setback on on these lots in our development standards that have been approved. Okay, thanks for confirming that. We're kind of treating this as a kind of a new, a new GDP for, right. for these lots. Mike and I talked about it and yeah, we asked, I mean, they asked for that the first time, we're just yeah. asking for You're it just again. Just asking for it again. Yeah, so, so it would be when we redo the GDP, we'll just, we'll be asking for it again because it is technically not part of the SR6. I believe it's a 30 foot rear, so, but so we're really not changing much except for the density. I think I recall talking about that when we discussed it last time, that it would just make it more of a concept, the neighborhood sidewalk, not as far back. It'd be more like um, what we've seen in McFarland and some developments with Viridian and whatnot, where it's just closer to the sidewalk, more neighborhood. These sidewalk. do meet all the front and back rules. <coughs> and so, I mean, we do have two stalls outside the garage, two stalls in the garage for every unit. So we have four stalls for every unit. And we might even be able to get a pickup with an extended Maybe not a long box, but uh, <laughs> six and a half foot box only, like mine. <laughs> All right, anybody else have any questions? Or? I guess as long as Bob, Bob was on the line there. Bob, do you feel that that would have that adding about 20%-ish um, in the number of structures that are in there will that have any impact do you feel on the overall development i guess that probably would have been a better question for him to answer i would think as far as traffic yeah as as far as traffic from what i recall from msa's uh traffic engineers i don't think this will have enough to impact their overall capacity uh for the streets and the design um out to uh highway 51 and the Rutland Dunn intersection. Um, we do have some language in the developer's agreement that uh, certain phases of this development, lot 16 and 17 per se, or at least lot 17, the larger lot, cannot be developed until uh, that roundabout is in at the 51 intersection. But I do not think this will impact that enough at this point. Okay, thanks, Bob. Any questions or comments from anybody zooming in? All right, anybody in the room? Okay, so in this one, uh, I believe we have a uh, something in here. Just a concept. So. Just a concept. It's just a discussion item, more or less. Okay, so what would be the next steps on this one? So you'd be coming back with that GDP request? We'll be coming back for GDP, but I don't think with the timeline we'd be able to make September meeting. <coughs> yeah, you probably would. Because with the notices and everything, I think, so we'll probably be here at the October with the with the GDP that was just like, just like the one that was approved from Lot 6, so we got to do the landscape plans and get the engineering done. I know, I know Bob's looking at... Uh, doing some engineering too because if we're if this is going to go through they're going to you know they're starting to lay out potential laterals and stuff like this and it would be nice to have curb cuts and laterals put in originally instead of have to cut them in later and mess up a brand new street so you're looking at construction next year i think that's bob might answer that better i think it's going in this fall or uh, 
We're going to be uh, installing uh, infrastructure, sewer water storm in that area um, as early as early October, so this fall yet. So all, we're, we're intending on getting all the storm sanitary and water and yet this year the piping in the entire subdivision and the streets curb and gutter and blacktop next spring in that phase three to the west side. So we're going to need some answers. Um, sooner than later in order to do a, a redesign for laterals in that air, into those lots. Okay. All right. It, you and I can probably talk about that offline, uh, you know, with Rodney and Jill or whoever we need to, so we'll figure out what that looks like. Correct. Okay. Anything else from this group? All right. Thanks for being here. You bet. Thanks. You bet. All right, item number 12 is the proposed ordinance amendments for chapter 30 of the floodplain. Anything you want to cover on this one, Michael? I think you've been working on this, haven't you? Yeah, the DNR created a new uh, floodplain model ordinance, and we essentially have to meet it. We haven't updated it since 2004, according to their records. So um, I worked with the DNR staff and updated our ordinance. So it's a process we have to go through. All right, any initial questions before we go into the public hearing? The, uh, is it retroactive to existing or is this just applied to anything new proposed? Um, most of it, I believe, is, is new. There, there are some stipulations, I think, for older development that, that is grandfathered. I mean, we've got some stuff that wouldn't, it wouldn't meet today's standards, obviously. You know, they're probably in the floodplain. They're so close to the river. You know, so. So what does this um, do to them? I, this doesn't really do anything. It doesn't impact anything them. to what's existing. No. Oh, okay. It's not going to change anything. You know, okay. it'll change if they want to do something in the future. If they maybe put an addition on or rebuild. On yeah, the site yeah, even definitely. Then. So yeah. what's it considered not conforming then? Yeah, we've got some non-conforming structures, sure, along the river. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know in the DNR kind of has a 50% rule too, right? Yeah. Percent replacement value? Yes. Yeah. If it's in the floodplain. The Highland building, that thing's in the floodplain. Yeah, and they yeah. even said our, our park down by Lowell Street, right, Phil? You've been down there. There was that house down there we were looking at. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And that's where that 50% came in there because you can't really fix up the house. It's in a floodplain, so they limit what we can do there to expand the park if we were to remove the house. So <laughs> it's kind of in limbo land. Um, has the city attorney looked at this one yet? Has Matt been working on this? Or? No. Okay, so we probably yeah, run it been past been him. Yeah, I've been working with the DNR and their attorneys. And yeah, even more reason. No, I'm they just were happy. <laughs> <laughs> We're probably not going to get them to change much language anyway, so but yeah. Matt might be able to help clarify <clears throat> if there's anything in specific. Um, we do have a need for a public hearing, so I would close the regular <laughs> meeting and reopen for the public hearing. I don't think anybody signed up for this one, are they? No, no. I didn't see anyone. So we'll close the public hearing because <clears throat> nobody's in the room and reopen for our business here. Does anybody have any questions or comments on this one? Map change. This doesn't didn't change them didn't change the map. Okay. No. <coughs> All right. Um, so the ordinance is in here, and these ordinances I think I mentioned earlier they typically after they go through the plan commission, they go to city council for two readings, so they get two whacks at it, and if for some reason something comes up, feel free to pass that on to myself or or Michael and we can ask the city attorney for clarification or even go back to the DNR if we don't like uh, what they've included in here. I imagine a lot of this is boilerplate from other municipalities. Well this is this is all new so they just they just updated this in March um, so it's a they totally new for model. Everybody or just a totally new model that that people have to meet yeah. I can only imagine how long they worked on it. 
Yeah, we usually lean on the DNR when we have questions about floodplain because it's not something we deal with every day. Any questions on this? Um, I know there's kind of a lot there, and it looks like they crossed out, added to it. So, so they just worked off our existing, or is this all new? Or was this theirs to begin with? They used with? our existing, yep. You'll see the cross stricken and underlined is the new stuff. Yep. So it looks like they added a heck of a lot more than they took off of there, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, they did. Wow. Okay. That's a lot to read. The only thing I noticed uh, was in some places there's two words that are smashed together just to prove reads needed, probably. I, I noticed multiple of those. I had to stop and say, what, what is that word? No, that's not a word, that's two words. <laughs> All right. Uh, if nobody has any further questions or comments, I guess I'd entertain a motion for this one. Mm -hmm. uh, move by, by Commissioner Bradford. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Farrow. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance say aye. 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 And any opposed? That ordinance carries. Um, future agenda items, I don't know if we have probably a couple things that are coming back from tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, we'll follow up on that development stuff tomorrow, get to the bottom of it. I did put in one phone call today and I wasn't able to connect. Like Michael said, we've been down on Main Street quite a bit here, especially the last week uh, with the cement workers. I know they changed contractors too, so maybe something got lost in the translation, but that still shouldn't have happened. Um, so we'll get to the bottom of that. Not good. Um, anything from commissioners for future agenda items? I'd like to have a look at it when they brought up the, like the warranty pickup window ordinance just to see what that language looks like and compare and contrast that to, to what we've got maybe. I mean, again, not like we're going to change it in three or four months anyway, but. Yeah, I think you said something about a conditional use, so we'll see what kind of conditions they put on that approval. Right, right. Uh, and, and I don't know if it'll be an apples to apples layout. But we'll at least take a look at that and a whole lot of conditions you can put on it. If you don't have it already in your code, it's not like you can just start making things up. You know, the way the conditional use language is now, you're pretty, you're pretty tied to whatever you have in place or regulations. And that's why we don't like to Problem. use it. Yeah. yeah. Because it's on us to Once it's approved, you yeah, know, then we're... Like on the conditional use, if we think, oh, it's going to create too much traffic, you literally have to have a traffic study that shows that. Well, it's kind of hard to have a study when it hasn't even been opened yet. <laughs> you know, you don't know how much traffic's going to be there, so it's it's a really big bar to clear in order to stop something if, if you go through that conditional use process. So, but on the other hand, you go through and change your ordinances like Verona did, and they spent $100,000 to do it. In, in a better part of what, a couple years maybe? Oh, that's a two year, yeah. You know, so you can get bogged down in that. And we don't get a ton of requests for the conditional use. So it's kind of a, <clears throat> are you gonna get an ROI on that? Probably by the time you get it done, you'll have to change it again for something else. Probably something in the floodplain or something. Right. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see uh, yeah, how we'll, fast our drive-through language first. I mean, I know we've, we've talked about it a little bit, um, you know, with issues out of, out of Dunkin' Donuts and that whole area, just to see if we can, because more of these are probably going to come along, so we may as well see if we can shore up language somewhere along the way. Right, yeah. Or have better definition of, of things in there. Like you say, it's only, uh, what did you say, what's it called? Is, uh, like a drive -through. In vehicle sales. In vehicle sales. Yeah. So is there something better we can use to be a little clearer on the definition? Okay. I, I think, too, that, that <coughs> that sort of system is great. I love ordering on my phone. But I also think that, like, the first six months, it's worse than if yeah. it was just drive up and order because you get 
a lot of people that drive up and go, oh, yep. okay, now what do I do? People are going to be confused, and you, yeah. get, you get more than three or four vehicles you there. you got to have that conversation. Now you got speaking. somebody in blocking traffic order, coming gotta, in, yeah. <laughs> and people trying to come around and leave. And, you know, yeah. it's, so I it's think a complicated site. It's a hot mess. Yep. Yeah, we should put a roundabout there while we're at That'd it. That'd be a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'd, they'd have to take the property then. The roundabout would be half, half in that property, probably. That's the way it looks with the one they're putting in there. They could just drive out the back of the parking lot. It's a little steep, but I mean... Yeah, a little steep? Yeah, I was going to say, that's a drop-off. That's a lot <laughs> steep. Then that, you got an elevator launch. Huh. You know? Take that pickup truck you're describing over there. Exactly. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Wait to take mine down. Well, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thanks for bearing with the technology. Hopefully we have it figured out by tomorrow night. <coughs> Good night. Make the place into a roundabout and then put the whole structure on a turntable. Yeah.